so we will begin uh, the session um, uh, and then we'll have uh, some welcome at the end. And then I'm sure we'll hear from organizers at various points throughout and there'll be a discussion session uh, to sort of close out uh, each day of this week. So I actually look forward to that very much. So our first uh, speaker going a little bit out of order um, right off uh, the start here um, is uh, Professor Fang Kung Guo from the Institute of Theoretical Physics in China. And uh, we'll be speaking on emergence of near threshold structures and hadron spectrum. So I'll let him uh, share from his end and uh, we can begin. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So let, let me make full screen mode. I, now I'm trying to uh, turn on, turn to the next page. Now you see the page switching? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, then let me start. And uh, first I want to thank the organizer for the invitation. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is are the near threshold structures in the heavy hadron spectrum. This is basically based on two recent papers that we published with uh, a very with a really excellent student uh, by Bing Song Zhou. This is uh, his name is Xiang Quan Dong, and also my colleague Bing Song Zhou. This is, the first one is about the uh, a general explanation of the near threshold structures, and then we make a survey of the possible hydronic molecules. So let me start with the. Uh, uh, with this because uh, Sebastian is not here. Let me just explain a little bit on this spectrum. So uh, it's the, uh, the whole story actually starts from uh, the year of 2003 because uh, uh, the, uh, the B factories started to take data uh, on the Chamonium uh, spectrum. Here in this plot, what I show is a comparison of the observed uh, Chamonium spectrum in comparison with uh, the quark model prediction from uh, Godfrey uh, Iska quark model. The, uh, the black lines are the Chamonium uh, spectrum predicting this quark model. And then the red lines are the states discovered before the year of 2003. We see that basically uh, the agreement is excellent, except for a, a couple of them in the high energy region. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the scenario just changed completely uh, at, uh, from 2003 when uh, the Bayer collaboration observed the uh, the the X3072. Now it's also called the Cas1 3072 because of its quantum numbers. Uh, it's one plus plus for for JPC. And since then, many other uh, states, many other spectrum have been observed in various experiments, including RCB, Barbara, BEST3, and, and others. And uh, a very prominent feature of them is that many of them actually are close to some open charm thresholds. For instance, the XA72 is located exactly, almost exactly at the D star zero, D, uh, D zero threshold within uncertainty. And also the ZC7900 is within the is around the uh, threshold of D D star, and the ZC 4020 is around the threshold of D star D star, and uh, some other examples I don't mention. Uh, in addition to this Tamonium spectrum, uh, the uh, near threshold structure also observed in other experiments. The RCB reported this famous pentaquark stuff. This is uh, from the 2019 paper of RCB which reported three narrow structures in gypsy proton environment spectrum. This is the so-called PC4312. This is just a few MeV below sigma CD bar threshold. And then two narrow structures just below sigma CD star bar threshold. Uh, and, uh, and in addition here, there is also hint for another structure just below sigma C star D bar threshold. That's for the pentaquark stuff. Even in the, uh, in the uh, double deep size spectrum, the, uh, the RCB data also reveals some non-trivial structure around thresholds. For instance, these are the, uh, this is a fit to the RCB data in our recent work uh, uh, introducing couple channel effects from the deep side, side prime channel and deep side, side double prime channel. Basically, the, uh, the, this deep and this narrow peak, they are located around these two thresholds. So, this, uh, the, the existence of these thresholds are very important for understanding this, uh, the masses of the uh, uh, states with the hidden charm or hidden bottom. And uh, the question, a natural question is why so? Why, why these thresholds are so important in understanding uh, this spectrum? Or what, what is the pattern? Where should we expect a near threshold structure or threshold structure exist 
where we should not expect such a structure exist. So we want to uh, answer these questions. So the, the starting point is uh, simply uh, a well-known fact. The effect is that at any S wave threshold, there must be, there is always a, a cusp. This is just a requirement of uh, unitarity. But for higher partial waves, because of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the momentum factor in front of the, uh, in front of this, uh, in front of this amplitude, uh, this, uh, the threshold behavior will be smoothed away. But for S wave uh, threshold, in the line shape of the amplitude, there is always a cusp. Now let us uh, focus on uh, energy region very close to a threshold, and then we can just uh, take the effect range expansion. And the expect range expansion for the amplitude, uh, for for the uh, for the sign convention of the scattering lens, we just uh, take that uh, it is uh, positive if the uh, if the instruction is attractive and the, it is not uh, strong enough to form bond state. So it, it is a negative, the scattering length is negative if the instruction is repulsive, or it is very attractive and form, has formed a bound state below threshold. So in both scenarios, the scattering length is negative. Now uh, in the region really close to threshold, we can just keep the scattering length term in the effect range expansion. And of course, also take the also keep the unitary term, which is uh, I multiplied by the center of mass momentum. And then uh, we can analyze the behavior of the uh, absolute sphere of this amplitude. So uh, this uh, the behavior can be easily seen because for the uh, if the energy is uh, the energy actually this energy is defined as relative to the uh, to the threshold. So if the energy is uh, higher, uh, is larger than zero. This means if we are uh, focusing on region above threshold, and then we see this uh, function is uh, decreases monotonically. So basically it has this behavior, but below threshold, whether this decreases monotonically or does increase and then decrease, this depends on the sign of the scattering length. So for positive uh, scattering length, this decreases monotonically, and this threshold gives us a ma maximum of this line shape. But if the scattering length is negative, and then this first develops a pool below threshold. So if the scattering length is uh, negative and the absolute value is large, then the pool is close to the threshold. And then we get a really near, near threshold bound state. So uh, as the, uh, we, can, we can also see from, uh, we can also analyze the, uh, the width of this kind of threshold structure. If we focus on the on the case that the uh, the uh, the uh, scattering length is positive, this means uh, uh, we have a maximum as the threshold, and then the pool actually is a, uh, is what we call as a virtual state pool. This is a pool on the second energy Riemann sheet, uh, but below threshold on the real axis. And then in this case, the uh, the width of this peak. The half maximum width of this peak, actually, we can we can write down it uh, very easily. This is anti-proportional to the uh, uh, to the reduced mass of these two particles, and also anti-proportional to the scattering length squared. So this means for 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 stronger uh, for stronger instruction, and also for heavier uh, for heavier particles, the uh, the peak becomes narrower and narrower until when the uh, instruction is strong enough to form bound state. And then we get a below threshold pool. Of course, if we really want to uh, want to study the whole threshold structure, we need to consider couple of channel problem, because otherwise we cannot really observe the behavior below threshold. So let, let us consider a two channel problem, and then we focus on the uh, behavior around the threshold of a higher channel. So I call I will call the the channel with the lower threshold as channel one and the channel with the highest threshold as channel two in the following. And then uh, we can construct uh, a non basic effect fit theory around this uh, threshold of channel two. So now we define this, uh, this sigma two as a threshold of channel two. And then uh, we can define the energy relative to this uh, threshold as, as this capital E. For E uh, taking small values, we can make power expansion in terms of E. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the momentum of the lower channel, or channel one, can also be expanded in power series of capital E. And the, low, uh, the leading order is simply constant because it does not contain any non-trivial behavior 
around the threshold of 10 or two. So we can write down the T matrix for this kind of couple channel problem. The T matrix is simply written this way. And this V, uh, this v is some uh, instruction kernel, uh, a two by two matrix, a symmetric matrix. This capital G is the two channel Green's function. And uh, uh, one of them, the lower channel, the, uh, the channel, the, uh, the function of channel one uh, is, uh, is given in this way. So the particles in channel one can be relativistic, but it doesn't really matter because we, what we only need to know is that this develops some UV divergence and it can be regularized in some way. And the imaginary part is given by unitarity is fixed. But for channel two, because we are focusing on the uh, energy ranging around this threshold, so this can be treated non relativistically. So we can regularize channel two using, uh, uh, for instance, a hard cutoff. And then we keep the, uh, the, uh, the part, the imaginary part of channel two loop function. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, that part. This is imaginary when this is above threshold and real when this is below threshold. But it is, uh, it is important to realize that in, 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 in this T matrix, only this term produces non-trivial behavior around the threshold of channel two. So this, uh, this has a square root branch point. And uh, the, uh, the UV divergences in these two loop functions can be, uh, can be renormalized by, by the two dynamical uh, di, uh, diagonal elements of the inverse of V. So basically we can define uh, we can parameterize the T matrix in this way, in this two by two matrix. And, uh, and this A11, A12, and A22 are parameters we introduced as real parameters. And they are, they are cut of independence. They are cut of independent because the UV divergence have already been absorbed. And this A22 can be understood as that if this channel two does not cover to channel one, and then this, is, uh, this would be the scattering length for, uh, for channel two uh, without channel coupling. And A12, although this is, uh, looks like a second length, but it is not because this is a uh, expansion around the threshold of channel two. So this is simply some parameter. And A12 uh, describes the channel coupling. So when one over A12 goes to zero, the two channels decouple from each other. So basically we have, uh, we write down this T matrix in a model independent way. And then we can work out the, uh, the effective scattering length of channel two easily, uh, considering the, uh, uh, the effects of uh, channel coupling. We, we see that this scattering length uh, becomes uh, complex because uh, channel one has a lower threshold and then this provides a uh, imaginary part for the effective scattering length. And the entirety requires that the imaginary part of this scattering length is, is negative. So this is, uh, this can be seen from the expression of the effect with scattering length in channel two. So the email part is negative. And then we can also easily write down the, uh, the, the, uh, this T matrix um, element, a T22 for channel two. And this from, from here, uh, we, we got this effective scattering length. So now let, let's consider production process. First, we want to uh, study the, uh, the line shape or the invariant mass distribution uh, in the lower channel, in the lower channel. So the, the, uh, only in this channel, we can, uh, we can see the whole threshold structure around the second channel, around the threshold of second channel. So the production of, the, of channel one can be written uh, uh, di, uh, diagrammatically in this way. So this contains the three parts. First part is direct production of channel one. And then we have a final state interaction in couple channels. And the, uh, uh, if we write down the formula, this uh, is given in this way. And uh, actually uh, we can use the liman schmenger equation to rewrite this, uh, uh, this production amplitude into, uh, in, in the second line. And then we see uh, this is written in terms of, uh, uh, just in terms of T11 and T21. And in front of T11 and T21, there are, uh, there are some coefficients. These coefficients would be a constant at leading order expansion of E. So this simply would be a constant and we, we can do a multiplicative renormalization to absorb this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, 
cutoff dependent, uh, dependence. And then finally, we get this kind of equation. And then uh, basically, this production amplitude is given by linear combination of T11 and T21 with a constant coefficient at the leading order. So all the non-trivial energy dependence are contained in T11 and T21. So now we can consider two special cases. The first special case is that the, pre, the, the channel two can be much more easily produced in some reaction than channel one. And then the, uh, the, uh, the production of channel one would be dominated by this, uh, by this diagram. And then uh, this, this means it is given by, uh, by, by the second term in this production amplitude is proportional to T21. And then its behavior would be given by T21. And then we, we realize that the expression of T21 is almost this, it's just proportional to the uh, to uh, to T22 in the last page. So basically, it has uh, the effect uh, the uh, the uh, the effect range expansion this kind of form, and uh, we are back to the uh, to the simple um, behavior that we analyzed for the single channel effect range expansion. We see uh, about threshold uh, this uh, this uh, amplitude squared all, always decreases when the when the energy becomes larger and larger, but below threshold. It decreases when the interaction, when the factoring interaction in channel two, uh, considering the cover channel uh, uh, effect, is attractive but not strong enough to uh, to form bond state. It just then the maximum is given at the threshold. But if the interaction is very strong and then a bond state is formed below threshold, and then we get a below threshold code but close to uh, close to the uh, to the threshold. So here I show. A few uh, a few curves for which I just take the uh, the masses of deep psi pi as channel one and d d star as channel two just for illustration. This does all mean this describes uh, physically these two channels. I just take their masses and then take some values for the uh, for the uh, for the parameters in the T matrix to to construct poles uh, near threshold uh, and and a case of uh, bound state pole shown as the uh, green. Uh, green line. So basically, you see when the interaction is stronger, and then the uh, the peak is sharper. When this is very strong, and then we have a below threshold uh, bound state. Uh, if we consider the case that the uh, the production is dominated by channel one, this means the these two diagrams dominate the production, and then the behavior would be very different. Because in this case, the uh, the behavior is given by T one one. In addition to this. Uh, Denominator, which is the same as uh, T22 and T21, this has uh, a numerator with the non trivial energy dependence. This numerator has a zero in addition to the pool from the denominator. And it's uh, the presence of this zero produces very non trivial behavior of T11 and also with this kind of production amplitude. Uh, that's uh, basically because this, uh, this zero is generally closer to the threshold than the pool, because this pool. Uh, the the distance of a pool to the threshold also receives some additional contribution, and then we see uh, taking the same parameters as before. We see uh, instead of peaks, which we, we we see in the last page, right? Narrow peaks. Here we we do not see any peak here. It's just because of this uh, zero that we produce some uh, some dip around the threshold. And uh, this is uh, uh, this means actually the same the same pool in different processes can behave very differently. In some processes, it can behave as peak. In some processes, it even behaves as a dip. Of course, when the uh, production, when both channels are important, and then the situation can be more complicated. Uh, we can also study the case uh, of producing the channel two particles, and then in this case. The amplitude is simply proportional uh, to this uh, factor, and and then we just have a, uh, a bound threshold. We ha just have a threshold enhancement, but then uh, there there will be suppression due to the phase space of channel two. So uh, the conclusion is that in order to have a near threshold, uh, really near threshold enhancement in the environment distribution, we would have. Uh, we would have a nearby uh, near threshold pool to uh, to cancel the suppression due to phase space. So this means the pool is uh, should not be far away from the threshold. Actually, this uh, the this general analysis we can actually find examples in, uh, in in known reactions. For instance, we can see the pi pi kbar carbon channels. 
from some parameterization that we obtained from literature, uh, this is uh, uh, this this is the T metric elements of, of this couple channel system. We see the T11, uh, T12, and T22. This corresponds to pi pi to k bar and k bar to k bar. Both of them have peaks around k bar threshold, because these peaks also corresponding to the existence of F naught 980. But for T11, they're just consistent with what we have analyzed. This instead of a peak, this has a dip around k bar threshold. And uh, this, uh, be this behavior was seen in a deep side decays into phi uh, pi pi, because in this case, the k bar can be much more easily uh, produced then pi pi, and then this pi pi should be produced through uh, through t uh, t11. So it only appears in uh, as intermediate states. And then we uh, 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 sorry, this uh, should be produced through k bar to pi pi, and then this we expect this must be uh, proportional to t21, and then we expect this uh, should be a peak just like this one. But for deep side to omega pi pi. This this uh, uh, pi pi is easier uh, to be produced in association with omega than kk bar, and then the kk bar only appear in the intermediate state, and then this uh, behavior should be given by t11. So this has a dip instead of a peak around the kk bar threshold. Th these are the data from BESS. So basically, we would expect. Uh, uh, Non-trivial near threshold structures in the in the final state with uh, with the chamonium plus uh, light hadrons, when the uh, uh, around the thresholds of open charm or open bottom uh, hadrons hadron pairs when their instruction are attractive, and also we expect the uh, the threshold structure to be more prominent in bottom sector than in charm sector. And of course, we want to know in, uh, at which thresholds we should expect this kind of behavior. For that, we need to resort to some, uh, some model. So we use, well, we consider a very simple model of vector meson dominance. This means we consider the interaction between a pair of heavy, heavy hadrons through exchange of uh, light vector mesons. So this, this model was, used, was known to be very phenomenologically successful in providing the, uh, the, uh, the values of low energy constants in current vision theory. And we just use that. And then this, uh, we, we, uh, we shrink the, uh, the, uh, the propagators of the light mesons to uh, the vector mesons to a point. And then we use the uh, parameter values of the couplings existing in the literature. And then we can work out the uh, pairs of uh, heavy meson, anti heavy meson, or heavy hadron, anti heavy hadron pairs that have attractive instruction, they are listed here. So basically the no uh, near threshold structures are all included here. So they, they all have attractive instructions. Of course, for the ZC, the exchange of light vector mesons just vanish. And then we would need to consider very uh, some exotic scenario that the exchange of chamonium could provide additional attraction. So, so that's the general analysis of the threshold structure. And then we want to go further away, for, go a, a step further to see uh, with the, uh, the simple potential that we derived through vector meson dominance, uh, which systems can form bound state or which system cannot, or which systems uh, they are repressive. Uh, we just use the potentials that we, we uh, just described from the vector meson dominance. And, and then we solve the, uh, this, uh, uh, the Schmenger equation, and we introduce some cutoff to regularize the uh, UV divergence in, inside in the in the two hadron loop, and, and then we can study the spectrum of uh, all the pores of this T matrix, because we only consider the uh, the constant contact terms uh, from this vector meson dominance, and then we can only have either bound state or vertices pose. We cannot have resonances because the, the potential does not have any energy dependence. And then uh, this uh, what we obtained. I think the spectrum that we obtained uh, looks very interesting. This should give us at least a feeling of how the spectrum of hydronic molecules look like. Uh, for instance, in the spectrum of a pair of, uh, or, uh, of uh, meson, uh, meson, meson pairs, uh, uh, with the positive parity, we, we observe the XA72 here as DD star bound state. Uh, 
We also observe a uh, negative C parity DD star bound state. Uh, this is uh, uh, this might correspond to the the so-called X theta 3072 reported by Campus uh, a couple of years ago. So here the green the green boxes are the bound states that we obtained, and the the size of the box uh, is uh, is given by the uncertainty that we estimate using uh, by varying the cutoff in the regu in regularizing the loop function. And the uh, the green uh, the the orange boxes corresponds to the solution that we only get virtual states instead of bound states. So for the virtual state one, we see there are also some very interesting uh, candidates. For instance, this uh, D star DS star DS star bar uh, pair, and also this DS DS star bar pair. So uh, in, in particular, this one, uh, this one uh, uh, just above 4.2 uh, Jeff, and uh, and this might correspond to uh, this kind. Of, this might be responsible for this kind of deep uh, reported by RCB. So this uh, you see in RCB. Uh, Data, there are lots of uh, uh, of the deep side phi uh, in this energy region, there are lots of thresholds. Basically, all the non trivial structures are either at uh, uh, well, all the all the peaks and dips are, uh, are around some threshold. So, so I think the existence of these thresholds should be very important for understanding uh, the uh, reported RCB spectrum. And I I would also like to mention that DD bar. DD bar channel, the, the zero plus plus bound state have, have, uh, has been uh, predicted in some uh, model calculations and also recently uh, by Sasa Prilovsek and the Kirkler Richards in that is. Uh, in the case of negative, negative parity, we also uh, uh, found lots of uh, molecular states, either bound state or virtual states. So here I want to emphasize this one. So this is a, is a bound state of lambda c lambda c bar. I would argue that actually the data, the recent data, supports the existence of this bound state. The uh, here, what I show here in this plot are the best three data reported three years ago. You see, basically this uh, this plot looks very weird because this is a cross section of lambda c lambda c bar threshold. Here is the uh, the of lambda c lambda c bar. Uh, distribution. Here is the threshold. Basically, the points are most almost smooth, uh, most almost flat without any suppression around threshold. So, uh, so from my point of view, this can be understood uh, by considering two two factors. The first one is the uh, Sumpf factor because lambda c is, is electrically charged and lambda c bar has the opposite electric charge. So, the uh, uh, very near threshold this receives a Sumpf factor. So that the production cross section does not vanish at the threshold, and then uh, the sum of effect uh, effects will uh, quickly diminish uh, at a, a little bit larger energy or higher momentum because this is really a long distance effect. To uh, to have uh, to have really this kind of flat behavior, we need another another effect which can be provided by near threshold pool, just for instance provided by by lambda c lambda c bar bound state. This is a behavior. The, these three lines corresponds to uh, a fit to this uh, data, assuming there is uh, there is a, a bound state below lambda c lambda c bar threshold. Of course, we also consider uh, some imaginary part or the decay phase of this uh, this guy. And then this can describe the data quite well. And there are lots of new states uh, with uh, vector. Uh, uh, vector quantum numbers above 4.8 GeVs. This can be searched for in the future, uh, future E plus and minus machines. For instance, BES, BES 3 or BPC2 is planning to upgrade, to be up, upgraded to BPC3 with, with energy uh, covering 5.6 GeV. So basically, this can be searched for uh, at BPC3. And uh, for, the, uh, for the baryon sector, we uh, we get the uh, the uh, the euro PC states. So, for instance, for the D bar or D D star bar and, and sigma C sigma C star instructions, we have seven uh, hadronic molecules, and uh, three of them would correspond to the PC forty three twelve and forty four forty and forty four fifty seven. Another three needs to be uh, uh, discussed. Uh, 
uh, are waiting for discovery in the in the future. And this one is the one uh, would be the one that I just mentioned, just below D bar sigma C star threshold. It might already be uh, be in the data. And for the uh, for the D bar instruction with cas uh, with uh, cascade C uh, or cascade C prime, we uh, we have uh, ten states, and two of them. Are just uh, uh, around uh, have masses around the P sub PCS state reported by by RCB and in the RCB paper they also mentioned that their uh, their uh, data can be uh, this can can also be uh, fitted using two PCS states this might correspond to this too. Uh, two minutes uh, left. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to finish because this is the last uh, page. So uh, well, this is last page before summary. So we don't have uh, uh, we we also have many other uh, states, in, uh, for instance, baryon anti baryon sectors, which uh, I I will not talk uh, much on this page, but they are hard to be observed. Uh, so this that's the conclusion. Basically, I think we we understand where uh, the uh, the uh, threshold structures should be expected. Basically, we would expect as long as the uh, the pair of heavy hadrons. Have attractive instruction, we would have uh, threshold, either threshold or near threshold structures. So uh, even if this is a threshold structure, uh, this it does not correspond to a bound state. Actually, it will have a virtual state code close to a threshold, as at least from our predict our calculation uh, of the second part when searching for the poles. This basically means for all the attractive he heavy hadron anti heavy hadron pairs. All right, we, we if there's no questions, the thank you uh, for, the for a very nice state. talk. Um, and, and we would expect actually the NIST reference structure should be more prominent in bottom sector than in charm. And uh, at last, I, I would like just to, to emphasize that studying these NIST reference structures are really crucial to understanding the masses of the, the excited hadrons, in particular in the hidden, hidden charm uh, sector, where lots of data already exist. And also, uh, some structure is a threshold. Uh, is a threshold structure. That doesn't mean a nearby pole uh, is, uh, is not existing. Uh, a prominent threshold structure actually requires a pole close to a threshold. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so just a quick announcement for people who may have joined a few minutes late. Our first speaker uh, didn't join us this morning, so we started off with uh, the second uh, talk in the session. So people are a little bit confused if they if they miss something. Uh, no. Um, so we have uh, time for just a few minutes of uh, questions, if there are any for uh, Professor Guo. So this is Paul Hoyer. Yeah, uh, uh, I recall that there are these funny uh, threshold structures inside the K into PP bar or close to PP bar threshold, which occur in some reactions, some decays, and others not. Can you say something about that? I, I think you are mentioning probably this one. I, I, I accidentally have a backup slide on, on this. Okay. So do you mean this PP bar threshold, right? Yes. In the yes. Side the case. Yes, indeed. For instance, this, these are the best three data for deep side because into gamma, eta prime pi pi. Exactly mm -hmm. at PBR threshold, there is a sudden drop. So from, uh, from my analysis, I would see this indicates, indicates a near, near PB bar threshold pool, the existence of near PB bar threshold pool. And also PP bar actually is not the driving channel for the production of this, uh, of this structure. So basically, some channel is produced first, and then, then this uh, generates PP bar, and then uh, finally this PP bar rescatter into the final eta prime pi pi. I think that there is, there should be a near threshold pool to reduce this, uh, this sudden drop, because this require the scattering length in PP bar channel to be large. Like a bound state or something. Yeah. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for the question. All right, any other questions? I think we can have one more. Is there anything important out there? I, I raised my hand, but uh, if, if I may. Yes, go ahead. OK. Uh, th thanks a lot, Feng Yun, for this very nice talk. Um, can, can you go back to the spectrum that, that you predicted for the hadronic molecules in, in this model? Now, yeah. in, in, in the baryon sector, we, of course, also have a very rich spectrum predicted from the non-relativistic quark model. And the experiment didn't find many of these states. So 
we had for some time a, a missing state problem in, in, in the baryon sector, right? So yes. when I look at all these states that, that you, you predict in your model, my, my question is, do we also have a missing state problem here? Or phrased differently, if in a certain sector we do not find hadronic molecules, what could go wrong with your model that in the reality there is no, no hadronic molecule? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Christian. A very good question. First, uh, I, I would see uh, the uh, the mid. The, this is a really very simple model of uh, producing her molecules because we just want to have wanted to have overall picture where we would expect to have. So basically, we we made several simplified uh, uh, approximations. First is we assume the interaction is provided by by light light vector meson exchange, and then we only consider single channels. And then we neglect mixing with normal chamonium. Okay, so with this uh, uh, in mind, actually we find at least what have been observed, the uh, the really unambiguous candidates or near threshold narrow structures are all included in this uh, in these predictions. Of course, uh, we uh, uh, I think one point is that uh, so far the experiments that really studying this uh, states. Do not really cover well. This only cover very small energy region in, in the predictions. For instance, uh, the the e plus e minus this can only cover the uh, the easily cover the y minus minus sector, not other sectors, right? And also for B the case, this only covers uh, the uh, the energy region below 4.8 GeV because this uh, this needs to have uh, B the case into K plus CC bar and then B minus K mass. Gives us 4.8 GeV. So basically, only only this uh, this uh, lower set of all the predictions are testable so far. And uh, and indeed, there is one uh, there is one uh, there are there are some uh, some prominent states that are predicted here, which are already in the uh, in the region that has been. Uh, uh, search for, for instance, DD bar. This has a bound state uh, below uh, below threshold. But I think the reason could be because this zero plus plus is hardly to think of any easy channel to search for this below DD bar threshold. And also there is a two plus plus state, D star, D star bar. That's generally expected in in hydronic molecular model as a as a spin partner of the X three seventy two. This has not been seen so far, but uh, we uh, we do not know whether this is due to the cross section. Well, the the data is not high enough, or due to some physical reason. For the physical reason, it could be because of the mixing of this hydronic molecule with the normal chamonium, because the mixing with the uh, if the chamonia are not far from this region, and then they could have a, a very uh, strong mixing effects. Actually, there are. Uh, Studies, for instance, from uh, from the Valencia group and also Salamanca group, uh, the uh, the uh, they studied the mixing between chamonia and the hydronic molecules, and uh, the effects can be different for different quantum numbers because just because uh, the hydronic molecules in some cases are above the chamonia, some cases are below the chamonia. So in some cases the the mixing gives a repulsion, some cases the mixing gives a attraction, but I think for the states. About 4.8 GeV, about 4.8 GeV. I would not expect narrow chamonia to exist in this very high energy region. So I think for the states above this this region, the molecules should really uh, be more clearly seen. Of course, uh, here we, we didn't consider the couple channels, but uh, yeah, in, in future I think this uh, couple channel effects should also be considered. All right, thank, thank you for that answer. I'd like to move on so we don't get too far behind schedule. We can pick things up in the discussion session this afternoon if there's things people want to continue onward. Uh, and uh, 